Now, is Necromancer one of the worst classes in PvP right now? Well, actually, yes. But hold on, I've been cooking up a build that makes Necro actually feel pretty good in PvP. It allows us to one-shot our opponents if we execute the combo correctly. We also get a very nice and satisfying burst combo with this setup. Not only that, but we are insanely tanky because we are playing a Necromancer and our healing is really good once again because we are playing a Necromancer. So the fact that we can pull off a one-shot combo is amazing. Don't believe me? Roll the clips. Alright, onto our skills here. For our first skill will be Flame Clench. This will be our main stun for the build. What this does is you basically launch a fireball at your opponent, knocking them back 8 meters and send them for 1.4 seconds. Elemental here, this will give us our form of Major Breach, which reduces the target's physical and spell resist by 6k, and it also applies Burning Shield and Concussive status effects every 7.5 seconds, which is super good and it gives us a bit of extra damage and helps us with our burst. Stalking Blast Bones here, it's just the bread and butter of the Necromancer, it's an amazing damaging skill. And I chose this morph because every second the skeleton spends chasing its target increases the damage of the explosion by 10%, up to a maximum of 50% more damage so it can lead to some nasty burst combo. Venom Skull just got buffed this patch, where every third cast of this ability deals 50% increased damage and I actually have been really liking it for some letting it with the burst. The reason why I chose this morph is because while slotted, casting any Necromancy ability while you are in combat will count towards the third cast. This is very nice since it's very easy to have the third cast ready for your burst combo so it hits more reliably than the Magicka version. That's why I chose this version just because it allows to get that third cast more consistently. And then Mortal Coil here, nothing else to be said. Great healing over time gives us some nice extra magic and stand recovery, which is very useful. Now I'm running Colossal here. The reason why I chose Colossal is because it pairs really well with the Flame Kench Blast Bones combo. It can lead some to some great burst combo. Resistant Flesh here. This is our main heal. Very good heal. One of the better burst heals in the game, I think. Because you grant the target physical and spell resist equal to half the amount heal for 3 seconds. So this is super good at allowing you to withstand pressure. So I really like this burst heal. Race Against Time or Rat will be our movement ability. You can go with the Vampire Elusive Myth if you want to do that instead, but I do prefer Race Against Time over Elusive Myth for this build setup. This will also be your flex spot, so if you want to run something else for this build, this is where you would have to change it. Resolving Vigor, great heal over time. After you cast, you also get Minor Resolve, increasing your physical and spell resist by 3k. Makes a bit extra tension, which is super nice. Spirit Guardian here gives us a nice hot over time. And while active, you gain 10% of the damage you take. Transfer to the Spirit instead, so this basically gives us a way of major protection here, because when you take damage, 10% of it goes to the Spirit Guardian. This makes you relatively tanky. And the Summoner's Armor, I chose this morph, because we want to reduce the cost of our Blast Bones and Skeleton Mender here by 15% just to help our overall sustain. And then Temporal Guard, while all slotted, you gain minor protection, reducing your damage taken by 5%. This is helps us to make us a bit more tanky on the back bar and help our overall survivability. On to our stat sheet here. I am a Khajiit. You could run Dark Elf if you wanted to. That would be the other race since it's another damage range, but I think Khajiit is better since we are running a crit build. We're putting 44 points into Max Magicka to get 22.5k Max Magicka, 31k health, and 16k stamina. Our stat is fully buffed up. It's 5,000 spell damage, 38%. Spell critical with 5k pen, 25k spell and physical resistance with 1300 crit resist. We are running Rallying Cry, so do keep that in mind that our crit resist will go up to 3k, and we will get an extra 300 weapon and spell damage. We are running the Shadow here. The reason we are running the Shadow once again is because we are running a crit build. This gives us a nice extra juicy amount of crit damage. Vampire Stage 3. Vampire Stage 3 is a must for every PvP build, and that is just simply because of the undeath pass right here. Reduce your damage taken by up to 30% based on your missing health. It's just too good to pass up, in my opinion. 
Especially when you're at 50% HP, you're already taking 15% reduced damage. So that's just super good to make you overall more survivable. For our food here, we're running Smoke Bear Haunch. Jews and Mistral is a purple version of this food and will work just as well. Our critical damage, by the way, is 40%. And our critical healing on our back bar is also 40%. So we're pretty good crit healing and pretty good crit damage here, 50%. Another thing is we also are running Spell Pots. So our critical percent works both on our front and back bar. As you can see here on our back bar, it goes up to 40%. And crit actually centered out as well with the necromancer because of this passive right here. While well, you have a living death ability slot, your critical strike chance with all healing abilities can increase up to 20% in proportion with your uh, the damage you've taken. So at like 5% HP, you're basically getting a 19% increased crit chance, which is super nice. Another reason why crit actually works well with the necromancer as well is because of this passive right here. Increases your critical chance against enemies on a 25% health by an additional 24%. So as you can see here, we get 38% here, so plus the 24%. So in crit range, we get 60% crit against them, which is super nice, allowing us to help finish off our opponents relatively easily. Onto our sets here. For our One Piece, I'm just running Recovery. I just want the extra sustain. That is the main reason. For our Mythic, I am running Sea Serpent Coil. I just love Sea Serpent Coil just for the extra damage it gives. The Snare is not really a big problem for me personally. We could run something like Mark and Ring or Death Dealer's Fate is another mythic you could run, but I just prefer Sea Serpent Coil because it gives you that 10% extra damage from Major Berserk and increasing your weapon is followed down by 430 for 10 seconds, just too good to pass off in my opinion. I like to run Rally Cry on a crit build and I just think it's really strong because it gives you 1600 crit resist with 300 weapon and spell damage. And for our front bar here, running the Massive Perfected Infernal Staff. Reduces the cost of destructive touch by 10% and increases your weapon and spell damage by 600 for 4 seconds after activating. If you don't know, that's this ability right here. So you use this and then you get 600 weapon and spell damage for 4 seconds, which basically gives that to your ult, your blast pones, and your venom skull. So this you just spam this basically off cooldown like every 5 or 6 seconds while make sure you're using flame clench to get that increased uh, weapon and spell damage. And the trade we're running is Sharpen with Restore Stamina. And the reason why I chose store, Restore Stamina Glyph here is because I'm running Venom Skull and it helps with our Stam Sustain. Since every time I auto attack and it helps, you know, get some stamina back, which helps reduce our Stam Sustain when we are spamming Venom Skull to finish off our opponents. But if you want to change this Glyph, then I think you're going to have to change Venom Skull out because you won't have enough sustain to spam this consistently without running out of stamina. And then for our back bar here, power with Restore Magicka. Just, I like the Restore Magic for the extra Magicka you get back, helping you sustain. But I do think Poisons here are better for your back bar. And then I just prefer Powered over Defending. It's just a personal preference. Both of them will work just as well. Just depends on what you like more. I like Power just simply because it allows me to get off my back bar faster since I heal more. And then for our other set here would be Orders of Wrath. Orders of Wrath is super good in my opinion because it's a craftable set. And I think it's the best set to run with a crit build because you can craft it and just get all the right armor pieces like light, medium, or heavy. And you can get all the traits relatively easily. Plus it gives you that juicy critical damage and critical healing by 8%. And then 1k crit also on the 5 piece which is super nice. That's about like 5% extra crit on our 5 piece and the extra crit damage is super good. For our jewelry we are running 2 reduced cost glyphs here. I just chose to run that because we have no sustain whatsoever except from our Baron here. So I chose one to run cost glyphs for Magicka. This gives us infinite Magicka sustain, which I really like, but you can definitely drop one of these for more damage if you want to go the more damage route, but I don't think you really need it. I personally think the reduced Magicka cost glyph is just better. And then the other one will be infused with spell damage glyph. So for the extra damage, but you can definitely go to spell damage glyphs if you want more damage. I just prefer the two reduced cost for the extra sustain it gives. For our traits here running divines on our boots hands and waist here and on her shoulders so running four divines reinforced helmet chest and legs here these will be our three heavy pieces and we're running three medium on our hands shoulders and boots and then one light piece on our sash here four divines once again with three reinforced and they're all prismatic lifts as well just for the most stats we can pump and that comes from the prismatic lift onto our cp our CP, I chose one running Aura Deadly Aim, Master at Arms, this just increases all our damage. And then Ironclad reduces your damage taken from direct damage attacks by 6%. Now if you want, you can put Fighting Finesse here instead if you want more damage. 
I personally think you can definitely do this and get away with it since we are a necromancer. And we do have the spirit garden, which already reduces our damage by 10%. But I just like the extra tankiness this gives. But if you want more damage, fighting finesse will definitely be a valuable option. Our red tree here running pain refuge. Sustain my suffering. Relentless and survival instinct. Once again, you will always have a negative effect on you in PvP. So survival instinct will always be procced. Along with sustained by suffering and pain refuge. Pain refuge gives you a massive amount of damage reduction since you negative effects will stack on you very, very quickly. So this can get easily up to 10 to 20% very fast, especially if you're in an outnumbered situation. And sustained by suffering just helps us with overall sustain. And relentless here, this is the one you can switch out for something else if you want a different CP passive. But I really like this because you get major protection for three seconds, reducing your damage taken by 10% whenever you're feared or stunned. This helps your overall survivability really well because most of the time you'll be taking a big chunk of that burst damage is when you're getting CC from your opponents. So that, since that is going to be when they're going to try to, trying to land their burst combo and this 10% damage reduction helps you with your overall survivability and I really like it. And the way you want to play the build is you always want to make sure your potion is up on this build. Sadly, you can't save any money on potions since we do need the spell pots here. Gives us major prophecy and major sorcery so we do need this up 100 percent of the time and since we are running that you actually should really grab the alchemy passive here uh, where resulting effects from your potion last 30 percent longer this is very important for this build in particular because we are running spell pots and you want to make sure that spell power and that spell critical is up 100 percent of the time all right so you always want to make sure you have race against time up for that minor force Always has to be up. Spirit Guardian and Summoners here. Always want to have all this stuff up by your distances. Make your pots up. Use Elemental here. And then you just start by spamming the Blast Bones. And when your first Blast Bones go in, you just immediately start using Cling Clench to CC them. So as you can see here, basically you just want to use Blast Bones and Flame Clench together since when you use Flame Clench, they have to get knocked back, which gives your Blast Bone basically a 10% more damage because it takes longer for the blast bones to get to your opponent before it blows up which then overall gives you some more damage and make sure you're always using flame cleanse once again just for that free 600 uh, weapon spell damage it's so important to keep that up 100% of the time combo of the burst you just set up the blast bones hit him with this so you can either combo it with flame clench into ultimate or ultimate into flame clench if you don't want to run uh the colossal though you can also run meteor if you want to it would be ice comet here you would want to run ice comet so the salt if you want to do that but uh colossal does more that's why i like throwing colossal over uh, meteor but once again that is this person if you guys did enjoy the build or found it helpful you know ask me hit that like button and subscribe and if you have any questions regarding the build the Sure to ask down in the comments below. I'll be happy to answer any questions regarding the build. And with that, I hope you guys did enjoy the video.